Ladies and gentlemen, good evening, hello, and welcome back. From the MLG Studios here in New York City, I'm Axel Toss, joined by Axelab, currently live casting some awesome StarCraft 2. We got Group H action between Illusion Maker, Moonglade, and Alicia. Already saw Alicia take down Maker, and now we're in the second match of the night, which is Illusion versus Moonglade. Moonglade showing some sexy play, going for a nice two-base, or a three-base Roach, devastating push behind Roach Speed and Plus One, able to take game one. That's right, of course, uh, Illusion, though, uh, had some nice aggression early on. She showcases Maker just wasn't ready to defend that push. Game 2 is going to be on Daybreak. Uh, this is a map where I don't think we're going to see that same speed roach push. It's a little bit harder to make it work yeah. on Daybreak. You know, that was really cool. You know, that, now that I'm thinking about that game, you know how Moonglade in the beginning only showed Lings? Yes. You know, how much of that kind of got uh, encouraged Illusion to make more Hellions to potentially deal with the Lings, which means he's a little bit more slower on getting the stuff that deals with roaches. And then Moonglade completely turning his strategy from Mass Ling to the Mass Roach, and he's able to break a loop. Really cool play there in game number one. We'll have to see what happens in game two. In the top right-hand location, we have the Blue Zerg player hailing from Australia, representing Team Envy. He's up 1-0. He's one win away from advancing to the winner's match to play Alicia. He is Moonglade. His opponent in the bottom left-hand location. The 17-year-old Red Terran player representing the United States of America and Team Mouse Sports. Currently down 0-1. He must win two in a row to advance on to the winner's match. He is Illusion. So, I, th I think we're going to see Illusion go Command Center first here. Uh, on Daybreak, that's a more typical build. He may still choose to use the Reaper, but you know, because of the, the length of the map, the Reaper takes a little longer to get to opponent's base. It, it's unlikely to get quite as much damage done. And, and when you do go for the Reaper opening, there's so many advantages to it, but you are slowing down that uh, economy because you're getting you know the gas before the, the command center. That's a good point, um, and I think you're right because, well, I know you're right because he's not making a barracks, and unless he's doing a crazy two racks play, it's definitely going to be that command center first. Um, now I wonder how. Moonglade is going to adjust as well. Of course, he's not going to have to deal with the uh, crazy fast Reapers. He's going to scout this out with an Overlord. Hasn't taken a gas just yet, so uh, going for that hatchery first. Daybreak uh, of a map where you're more likely to go for three bases because of that long rush distance and because, you know, it's hard to really be uh, all over the place as far as multi-prong harassment is concerned because of the way the, the, the first few bases are set up. So it should be interesting to see what he goes for. Like, do you think if, if that push failed from Moonglade, he would have gone into some sort of Roach Hydra weird composition? Uh, uh, it's possible. Uh, he could also just go into Roach Speed Bane. Yeah. Um, Roach and Faster. Uh, there, there's a couple of possibilities. Uh, the upgrades make Roach Hydra are a pretty decent combination, but Akron Waste Drops can be so annoying if you're going to uh, Roach Hydra. You know, uh, Illusion Blend the Command Center on the high ground. Oh. Which, which is actually not super, super common. Um, and, and what it means is he's, you know, he, he wants to really protest getting the gas. He wants to make sure that, he basically wants to make sure there's, there's no chance of losing his thing to like the 6 pull or, or a 9 pull, etc. I mean, uh, th those builds are so rare against Terran that most Terrans just say w whatever. And, and it's not like you can't, uh, you actually can still sometimes beat him even with the, the low ground expansion. Um, but, you know, it's just the, the amount it, it affects him is so little, right? To, to move the command to low ground is very minor. and. Uh, just making sure there's no chance he can lose his thumb, something weird early. SCV scout being very useful, seeing that the, the speed, seeing that the no gas, he knows he's doing fast speedings. Uh, and that's actually very important because uh, the build looks like he's, he's going to go straight for Hellions. Uh, and when you go straight for Hellions, if he sends his first two Hellions out after Command Center first, they're going to die at speedings. So if he didn't know that speed uh, would, would finish at, at the time it's going to finish, then he might send those two Hellions out the scout, lose the first two Hellions, and all of a sudden, map control is going to be uh, yep. Moonglades for quite a long time. We actually saw Moonglade like hide his Lings a little bit at the top of his ramp once that early Hellion thing, a uh, Hellion push there from Hellion came out, or from, uh, excuse me, Illusion came out. And that's a, a strategy that Zergs will do to try to get that trap. Of course, if you can sprint out there and your Terran opponent isn't looking for a second, and you can scoop up all those Hellions and potentially a, a couple Reapers, 
that's going to be great. You're going to have map control, and, and you're going to kill all those units. It's, it's obviously a fantastic situation. So we'll have to see, um, you know, if something like that can happen here. Of course, I would expect um, Illusion to obviously send those units, those Hellions, across the map. Potentially you know, delay creep, delay that third. What's really interesting here is Illusion actually... Um, He's using the command center to finish the wall to the top of his ramp instead of that that second depot. Uh, there's no depot above the factory. Of course, he has the wall because of the command center. And that's kind of neat because uh, you have to wall top your ramp so the speedings can't run in and kill you, right? Right. Uh, but this method, he could use that depot to help uh, protect the Marines, right? He has a little wall by his natural with the two Marines um, that were hiding behind there. Now, of course, they're in a the bunker, but it also prevents speedings from trying to bunker without having to walk around other orbital. And now additional more supply debris can go to create a, a frontal wall in front of the natural. So just getting a little bit of a head start with his more advanced walls. And then of course later I do think he'll probably get that wall in the main so he can move that third CC out. But uh, for now it's a really cool uh, technique to just accelerate the, the safety of, of, of setting up these defensive measures. Also so far in the first seven minutes this build uh, from Moonglade looks pretty identical. Of course this is his way of getting to that two base saturation, getting those gases, getting those double evolution chamber. Of course it remains to be seen where he's going to go for it. Uh, where he's going to go f uh, at this point. Is he going to start, which upgrades is he, is he going to start? How fast is he going to get that layer? Are we going to see a roach warrant? Um, all things we're going to find out fairly soon as the carapace is upgraded and the second evolution chamber is going to upgrade. Right, I think it's going to be the melee. Uh, I think yep, he would it have, it, normally like what he did last game, you start to layer slightly before the upgrades if you want to get roaches because the speed upgrade is so important. You got to get that roach speed going um, shortly after those upgrades. Uh, we're seeing a different build from Illusion though, adding in the second and third barracks before oh. the second and third engineering base, uh, which is going to accelerate his marine production along with that stim pack research. I assume combat shields will be uh, probably behind it, but the goal here is I think he's going to combine Hellions and Marines. To do a poke, this is an attack that Muslim used to do a lot uh, as well. I, mean, I think he, he still might. You really try to put a lot of pressure on the Zerk Third by getting Stim faster than uh, they're they're basically ready for it. Overlord gonna try to scout exactly what's going on. Sees a lot. Sees a, a good amount. The third command center, three barracks, all the add-ons and the timing of the add-ons. Also saw one engineering base. So Moonglade pretty much not in the dark at all. Gonna be happy with the with the scouting that Overlord was able to receive. We have Bailing Nest. We got a Roach Warren on the way as well. You know the Roach Warren. It's it's not necessarily indicative of any sort of Roach aggression, but it, it can be something that you know you get get a few Roaches out to help with uh, with Hellions. But you never really want to have to do that if you're really going to be trying to focus on the lings and uh, you know I would assume mutas as the spire might be going down fairly soon we've got the, the additional gases going down as well of course you want to make sure you keep that gas income going so you can really extend that tech and not have to delay any of it um, so you know it's it's not like he's going to try to do any sort of I don't think he's doing a timing push here for sure just focusing on drones right now just playing a very sick game both these guys just setting up their econs and uh, wanting to set up for the, the mid to late game here. Definitely. Uh, Illusion is going to be looking to first stabilize that third pace, uh, make sure there's no possible counterattacks. He's got the bunker there set up. Uh, and then he's going to look to put on some pressure. He has stim pack, uh, and, and he's got a decent marine count. He's got a lot of Hellions as well. So he's going to poke around with the Hellions, and then probably as soon as he gets a couple of medevacs out, he move out with the Marines as well to put on some pressure from the third. But I think there may be mutas in play before he can really get that timing going. Yeah, Spire's about halfway done. I'm wondering if Illusion is going to try to scan here, because they're talking about what he knows. He saw the third hatchery, um, and that's about it, right? Uh, the SCV earlier spotted that stuff, but now he doesn't necessarily know what's going on. So we'll have to see if Illusion tries to scan sometime soon um, to figure out, okay, what am I going up against? How do I need to prepare? But for now, again, just getting that third base set up, continuing with those upgrades. Armory is, yeah, Armory is done, so going straight into the 2-2 on that bio. That's very, very important. Uh, also adding on some medevacs. So once those medevacs get on the field, especially for a player like Illusion, you're definitely going to start seeing some aggression, whether that be just going across the middle of the field and trying to, you know, see what you can find out, or peeling away drops, going into the main, going to the third, and trying to get some damage done that way. And this can be one of the best ways to deal with Mulus, is basically keep the Mulus on their side of the map so you don't need to defend the Ras by, uh, just by attacking him. Uh, Moonglade, he doesn't have any billions quite. He's morphing him in an exposed area. Might be the worst place to try oh, to morph those. Without, yeah, he's, he's got to get baitings up in, in time. Of course, Moon, uh, Illusion doesn't realize there's no baitings quite yet, so he's uh, being a little bit more hesitant to go really deep into creep. Going deep into creep versus baitings can be exceptionally dangerous. Yep. Um, 
Uh, so it's kind of fortunate for Moonglade, but that's also something you can you normally rely upon, uh, you know, more of those retroactively. There's the scan, and now he knows exactly what's going on. Lings and Banelings coming forward here from Moonglade. He has speed on the Banelings, but an interesting place to, to try to engage here. He's going to try to kite back with the Hellions and the Marine, trying to get those shots out the Banelings, trying to get those connections, but Illusion is fleeing away as fast as he can, and a pretty even trade there, I would say. Yeah, it seemed relatively even there. Yeah. Uh, I mean, a, a lot of Marines like, Helens went down, The but... mutas were spotted, right? So yeah. you can start putting yeah. up turrets. The mutas were on his opponent's side of the map, so Illusion potentially saved some harvesters there, as crazy as that sounds. I mean, but Moonglade kept that fourth base alive. Uh -huh. uh, Moonglade's got 2-2 two, two almost done, so uh, I feel while the trade was even. Moonglade and may maybe slightly ahead. No, oh, Marines trying to scurry away, and there is nowhere for them to run. They will die. Medivac's getting out there. There's a drop in the main base of Moonblade here. A lot of Marines being dropped here from Illusion. This is what we talked about, using that other force to distract it, now going after this economy. The Ling's coming back here from Moonblade to deal with this, so it's gonna be, uh, it's gonna be killed. The Muta's taken down the Medivac's as well, but nice little drop there from Illusion. It is, and now that the army's at the top of the map, here comes another attack right into the fourth. This is what we talked about. Illusion loves being absolutely everywhere with his Medivac, with his bio. Keep in mind, his upgrades are still going strong. 2-2, two, two, about to finish. But Moonglade has 2-2 two, two as well, so he's uh, staying strong with those. Has yet to go up to Hive, yet to add on an infestation pit, so gonna stay on 2-2 two, two for a little bit here. The Muta's coming in to try to deal with this, but at the same time, Illusion behind this, taking a fourth base, continuing with his economy, continuing with his production, sending more and more units across the field. Illusion putting some great play, getting really, really cost-efficient with these trades by always attacking where the Zerg isn't. And one other thing I really like about Illusion, he's got Marines across the top left side of the map to spot for those Zerg and run -bys. Yeah, a great move there from Illusion. The Mutas uh, here taking down a an, uh, an Medivac. Of course, the Overseers are very instrumental in this composition. The spot for those Widowmines. Widowmines trying to burrow in the ground. Moonblade trying to peel away some units, but those getting killed before the Widowmines get shot or get their shots off. So Moonblade going to stay back for now. Eight but, uh, more Mutas, ten more drones by Moonblade wow. going very, very no Muta pit, So not going into Hive, so he's never going to have that the 3-3 three, three capabilities for at least the time being. Meanwhile, plus three armor on the way for the infantry for Illusion. Oh, Illusion spraying the bio out, trying to get his engagement, trying to learn back to Willmines. Gotta stay close to those oh, the great Bailings. shots onto the Banelings. Illusion controlling those Widowmines pretty perfectly. Moonglade trying to figure out the optimal way to engage. Now the Banelings come for Illusion, not watching for a second, and that's what happens. Uh, some big detonations there by those Banelings, and Illusion's gonna have to flee back to these reinforcements. Gonna try to re-engage, and Moonglade just trying to shove his opponent away, but Illusion continues to progress. Like, he's adding on this fourth base, continuing with his upgrades. Um, and just slowly getting closer and closer to that fourth base. You know, it, when the supplies are neck and neck in a situation when a Terran's uh, working on, on the third level upgrades to build the fourth base, I have to say, that I think that it's going well for the Terran. Beater Zerg Base coming in, not many babies, but the Marines don't move back wide in time. What am I? Decent shots onto the Lings. You know, the Marines continue to come constant here. pressure is starting to wear on Moonglade. Yeah, Moonglade has been spread out so much, but here comes a bunch of Lings and Banelings. Are there any more Widow Mines left? I'm not so sure. Overseers are there to detect those. And Illusion might retreat for now. Oh. Great Baneling, or great Widowmine shot onto those Banelings, and Moonglade cannot engage here. This this avenue at the bottom has become the most ridiculous battle scene I've seen in a while. It, it absolutely has. It's a never-ending flow of, yeah. uh, of Illusion versus Moonglade. It's like Moonblade. tug of war. Uh, the problem is, is he, he's been losing a couple medivacs, and as that medivac count decreases, it gets much, much harder to continue these skirmishes. The Muta count as well has been untouched. Moonglade's starting to get the upper hand in these trades. Well, the Muta's never actually able to go into the go after his opponent's economy, which is pretty interesting um, because they've always had to help deal with these aggressive pushes from Illusion. But now it looks like Illusion's going to stay back for a little bit. Look at this, 17 Marines in production at a time. He has a ridiculous amount of uh, reactor barracks. He's got eight reactors. It's pretty amazing. He does. Uh, uh, the one thing he needs, though, is more medivacs. Uh, uh, the trademark of Lucian's play is often how effective he is with the draw play. Uh, but with only a few medivacs, it's very hard to really execute that. He's just going for more and more and more direct confrontations, more and more and more pressure. Moonglade is now starting to work on attack. Passion Glance is halfway down. Hive is, is almost complete. Oh, here come the Lings and the Mutas. Another push here from... Oh my gosh, wow. The Widow Mine actually killed a lot of his own Marines there, and that's going to be bad because Moonglade is going to strike while these Marines are weak. Banelings coming forward. No more Widow Mines here in the composition of Illusion. He's going to have to back away. Pretty unlucky situation there, but good eyes there from Moonglade, able to realize the Widow Mine was there, able to peel away the Zergling and make that friendly fire happen. 
And Lucian now has a Drilling Claw upgrade to allow those wooden ones to burrow and unburrow a little bit faster. He also has level 3 armor, uh, which is going to really, really hurt to believe the Mutilus to take on the Marines, even when they're fast on them. But remember, Moonglid hasn't gone a single upgrade for this Mutilus today. Got the burrow. The Lings and Banelings have to be careful. Great shots by the Wooden Ones, taking out so many Lings and Banelings, weakening the Mutas. Illusion continuing to try to pressure this fort does not want to let it get up. 3-3 has begun here, and four investors on the way. The investors could be key in finally holding this off. If Moonglade can get those, those fungal grows down and then sweep in with the Banelings, that's definitely going to shut this down, but a lot of Banelings here. Illusion trying to split up the Marines as fast as he can, and look at that. Moonglade not even needing the investors, but here come the reinforcements from Illusion once again. So relentless with this pressure. Moonglade, oh, Moonglade has a couple of investors the now in action. Watch out the Fungles, there are the Fungles from Moonglade. That's exactly what he needed. Mutas need to target down those Metavax. Metavax getting very low on energy. Widow Mines, though, aren't going to be able to... The illusion just keeps rallying yeah. units. It never ends. It's and ridiculous. a fifth base, a fifth planter, is up at the bottom of the map. That's a great staging point to attack this middle location of Moonglade. This is, this is insane. Illusion so relentless. But Moonglade is actually doing a, a, very, a very good job holding this off, however. And uh, Infestors getting low on health, you do not want to lose those Infestors. It's going to be very oh, important as the game goes along. He needs that 3 3 to finish. That's going to be does. really important. Both halfway done. Uh, Illusion right now at 2 3. The third attack of will finish at the same time as Moonglade 3 3. A nice wooden mine shot there. Moonglade's evacuating the fourth. He's oh, out of no. Larva. He can't continue to reinforce the, the speeds at the same quantities. Uh, he, I, yeah, I think he. What, what Moonglade needs is. I think he forgot he got Hive. He built a second Infestation Pit. He forgot he had Hive. He meant to build an Ultras Cavern. He was banking money to get Ultras, but he built the wrong building. Oh my god. Uh, and now he's in a world of trouble. Oh no. Uh, Ultras popping out right now would be so instrumental, so helpful. Oh, just now in realizing with this. he built a second infestation pit. Oh no. Started I Ultras saw that. Cavern. Oh my god, he did. Wow. Uh, and this is, this is, he really wants to have those Ultras now. He, 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 he developed the, the bankroll on purpose to make that explosion. Yeah. And now he's losing base after base after base. This illusion constantly reinforcing across the map. And the thing is, illusion making marauders. So realizing that that transition could be coming here from his opponent, but perhaps wondering, okay, what's going on? Where are your ultras? Moonglade focusing so much on trying to shove away this aggression, he makes the second infestation pit. It doesn't make the ultras cavern, and that's going to be a costly mistake. There's the GG well played, and and Moonglade, as you said, he had like 1,500 minerals nearly 3,000 gas. He was actually 3,000 minerals before he realized that they just built a bunch more Zergians. Um That's tough. Yeah. I mean, the, I, he, would, he was going to lose that middle base no matter what. Yeah. Because uh, Ultras have a very long build time. What's actually, the hotkey? He probably would have lost. It, it's VI versus VU. Yeah, know, and, and I is right next yeah. to you. So. I mean, that's what happens when the game is going this fast. Yeah. Constant, constant, just constant action. Illusion never let up for a second. And, and when... When there's always action, you're always yeah. microing. What happens is when you go back to macro, your screen's on there for a split second, and if you only have a split second, it's really easy to just, you know, uh, make that misclick there and get the wrong building. Uh, but but to be honest, even if he, he got the right building originally, I still think he would have lost the middle base and the bottom right. Yeah. And then the ultras could have pushed Illusion back, but Illusion would have been on five bases. He was already adding Marauders. He, in fact, was adding additional tech labs as well, so he's going to be up to building five, six Marauders at a time. Uh, so... I, I think Illusion was in a really good shape in that game, no matter how you look at it. it was, that was a really cool way to play. Um, oh, yeah. You know, just constant aggression. Like, from minute, I don't know, it was like minute 12 or minute 11, he was just relentless with that. And then behind all of that, he was doing stuff. Like, he had his upgrades going. He had that fourth command center on the ground. I wonder if Illusion had, had gone a little bit more quickly into upgrades, if that would have been a little bit easier. Of course, that means getting the ultras out a little bit easier. Um, but again, Illusion just all across the map ridiculous marine control he's making like 20 marines at a time or something crazy like that and then obviously continuing to take those bases continuing to bolster that economy and moonglade when you're faced with that much pressure one misclick it, it can cost you um so great play there from illusion he's gonna tie up this series one to one which means we're gonna go to a game three guys stay tuned game three between moonglade and illusion coming up